I've been working on lately. This is in uh, Autodesk Fusion 360. This is a 3D CAD program. You can do a lot of neat things with it. I've just um, followed a few tutorials and what I'm trying to do here is model essentially the end of the crankshaft from the tractor that I'm working on converting to electric. So if you'll notice there's four holes here. Uh, those are for the flywheel bolts and another smooth hole because essentially the end of this has a alignment pin in it and I'm modeling that as a separate shape because the whole idea this part is something I could make on a lathe and then uh, on a mill I could drill these holes including a hole right here and then after the fact uh, drive a half inch metal pin into there to essentially make uh, something similar to that crankshaft end. Uh, another really cool thing about this program is the ability to do threads right in it. Uh, you can also kind of go back in time, uh, edit features, uh, so it's sort of the ultimate undo, which is a, a pretty cool thing. So just for example, right here, um, besides saying, hey, I want a half inch hole, I can actually say, well, I want it to be a half inch tapped hole using the specific threads. Um, even for the machining, it would specify what kind of a drill bit you would be using. Uh, just a lot of cool stuff in there. So I designed one hole and then I, I mirrored it around a circular axis. Um, little bevel on the edge here. And the other cool thing is I also found we can insert a part from uh, McMaster Car. So I went in there and you can actually just do a search for fasteners and whatever and I found the correct uh, half inch 20 bolt and then it lets you import a 3D model directly into here. So I imported it, I duplicated it four times, I aligned it with the holes here. So now we have a representation of the flywheel bolts and we've got our alignment pin and now this is really starting to look like uh, some machined thing. Um, one other kind of a cool thing here, uh, you can do stuff like do things rub or fit or not or whatever. So if I go to inspect, I hit interference, I can say, okay, let's take this main hub. Does it interfere with say this bolt? And then we can compute it and it's going, uh oh, you got some interference here. And what I can do then, I can go in, I zoom in on this, and I can see that there is interference. And the reason why is I did not line up the bolt properly. I just kind of, I centered it, but the up and down mismatches. So essentially this would be um, cross-threaded uh, if this actually happened in the real world. But I, I'm not worried about that because I'm, you know, I'm just gonna screw those bolts and they're not actually a part of this. However, what is, is that, um, alignment pin. So on this pin here, I thought, oh boy, I better double check that. And what I did is actually uh, the hub with a hole in it and the pin I based on the same circle. So in essence, they're, they're touching exactly perfectly, but uh, in the real world, that means they're going to be rubbing. So if I, what I did was I grabbed this and I scaled it um, to be just a tiny bit smaller in diameter. So now if we inspect it and we go to interference and we select that and that and compute, no interferences, yay! Um, so if I do something, for example, like um, I 3D print the hub and then separately I 3D print the alignment pin in theory, they should go together. Of course, some of that depends on the quality of the 3D print. And then, of course, I should be able to just thread uh, real-world bolts through there. Uh, one of the other issues, though, would be if I am just 3D printing this as a test model, uh, would actually be the quality of the uh, bolt holes here. So um, what I'm probably going to do is I'll have them as part of the 3D model, but I'll go through and I'll tap them by hand after the fact. So that's a little something I've been working on, and it's uh, real interesting stuff working in, in 3D modeling software and all the neat things that you can do with it.